Hi there. In this video, we're going to extend our understanding of network analysis by taking a quick look at what happens when there are delays to activities in a network diagram, a project, and consider the implications for the critical path. Don't forget, as we draw our network diagrams, the golden rules to follow, which make it much easier to complete the diagram and work out where the critical path is. Firstly, when we're working out the earlier start time for each node, we work from left to right. We always calculate the first node first and work from left to right. And as we calculate the earlier start time, it's always the highest calculated figure. We have to wait for the activity with the longest duration to finish before the next series of activities in the next node can start. And when we're working backwards to work out the latest finishing time, again, we reverse that. We go from right to left and again, we take a calculated figure, this time the lowest calculated figure. Hopefully it will become clear as we have a look at this diagram. Let's work through this. This is our original uh, network diagram and we're going to firstly calculate what the earlier start times are to work out the project completion time. Then we'll work backwards very quickly to show the latest finishing times and spot the critical path. What we'll then do is we'll introduce some delays to the project and see what the effect is. Now you may want to pause the video here and have a go yourself at working out the earlier start times and the project completion time. If you want to do so, uh, pause the video at this stage before we start going through it. Well, we'll use the highlighter uh, circle here just to help us guide our way through this network. At uh, node one, we have two activities that begin, activity A and activity B, and they converge on node two. So. At node 2 we have to wait for activity A and B to be finished before we can start uh, the next series of activities and we have to wait for the longest activity to finish first. Uh, so B is the longest activity, therefore the earliest start time we can start C, D or E must be 4. We have to wait for B to finish. A would have finished a week earlier. Looking at node 2 now we can see three activities can start. And before we can move on to the next series of activities, which go beyond node 3, we have to wait for D to finish. That will take the longest. C will finish before D. E will finish before D. Therefore, the earliest start time at node 3, we always take the highest figure of those three activities. It must be 4 plus 6 equals 10. And moving on from node 3, we can see three more activities begin. F, G and H and they converge onto node 4, and we have to wait for G to finish. That will be the last to finish, won't it? F will finish a, a week before, H will finish first, just two weeks there. So therefore the earliest start time uh, that we can start activity I will be when F, G and H are finished. We have to wait longest for G, therefore the answer is for node 4, early start time, 15. There are no other activities apart from I, that go from node 4, therefore it's simply a question of going from node 4 to node 5 and adding in the duration for activity I, which must mean that the project completion time to get all nine activities completed is 18, in this case 18 weeks. Now this diagram is relatively straightforward. When you work out the latest finishing time, you work backwards, always taking the lowest calculated figure. Now sometimes these diagrams are more complicated than this. It will work out to be actually the same as the earlier start time as you work your way back through that data. So there we go. That's the completed original diagram for the network with the assumptions about the nine activities and their durations. And it tells us that the overall project will take 18 weeks to complete. And let's spot the critical path. Well, don't forget the critical path are the activities that are on the longest path through the project. These are activities which, if they are delayed, they will add to the delay for the overall project. So we can work out that the critical path, therefore, must be activity uh, activity B. That's the longest in that series. Activity D, activity G, and I. And we normally highlight those on the critical path with a little double dotted line. B, D, G, I as the critical path. The project completion time, 18 weeks. Okay, so there we go, there's our original project. But what happens 
if that project completion time is affected or potentially affected by a couple of delays to the project. What happens if activity A and activity F are both delayed by two weeks? Does this change the project completion time? Does it change the critical path? Well, both being delayed by two weeks, you might think, well, that's a four week delay, but it may not necessarily impact the completion time. It depends whether there are, are, are other activities that are actually on the critical path. So let's now have a look at that revised chart. And we can see here that uh, we were told activity A is two weeks longer. And therefore that does have an effect at the start. Previously it was three weeks. Therefore activity A takes longer than activity B. Therefore we can't start C, D and E until five weeks have passed when previously it was four. So that's built in some extra delay into the project. C, D and E are the same, no change there. So we can't start F, G and H until those three have been finished. So therefore it must be five plus the longest activity, which is six, five plus six is 11. The earliest start time for F, G and H is 11. But we've also been told that F has been delayed by two weeks. F was previously four. Therefore F now becomes the, the, um, the activity requiring the longest time before we get to node four, where previously it was G. So again, using our earlier start time, it's 11 plus the highest calculated figure, six, 11 plus six, 17. And we then add on I, three more, to get to a total project completion time of 20. So the effect of this has been to firstly make A a longer activity than B, therefore A is on the critical path, and F, a longer activity than G, therefore F becomes part of the critical path. So the critical path is now A, D, F and I. And the overall effect on the network is that whilst both were delayed by two weeks, overall the effect on the project completion time is an extra two weeks. Not two lots of two weeks, it's two weeks. And that's because of the way that those two activities were treated the first time round on the critical path. So there we go, that's a typical way that the examiner might test network analysis to give you either a part or completed network and then ask you to consider the effect on the project completion time of a delay in one or more of the activities. And the key thing is to remember and work out whether that delayed activity was on the critical path in the first place. Could the business respond to these delays? Well, yes, of course it could. It could be that there are activities that have what's known as float, that they can be completed without delaying the critical path, without extending the critical path. And it may, be, may well be that some resources that are devoted to those activities could be redirected to the activities which have been delayed in order to help them achieve their target quicker, to be completed quicker. And that's the beauty of float. What you try to do is to allocate float or spare resources to activities that are on the critical path to try to make them shorter and therefore potentially reduce the project completion time. So there we go, that's uh, an overview of and an example of uh, how you make changes to networks which affect the critical path.